Hello again, and welcome to another holiday video. I decided that uh, that Halloween garland I made was really fun, and I wanted to make another one for Christmas. I still have so much air drying clay left over. I've got to find more uses for it to use it up. But I thought it's the perfect color to be little gingerbread people or gingerbread houses, candies, whatever, right? It looks like gingerbread cookies. So I thought I'm going to make a garland with a bunch of little gingerbread shapes. And I went through my cookie cutters and I decided on like a little... Uh, traditional gingerbread man and woman and a tree, but I mean, honestly, one's wearing a skirt and one has no pants. So you can decide who, which one is which all on your own. Uh, and then I thought the tree was just like a cute accent as well. Uh, so I learned a bit from my mistakes of the last time. Uh, and part of that was that I needed to make uh, either more or less, <laughs> depending on how I wanted to string it. And on top of that, I needed to find a way to um, keep them laying flat instead of being able to twist on the uh, whatever cord I gave them. So with these ones, uh, I kind of planned ahead a little bit. I decided to do less of them because I thought somewhere in all of my random craft supplies that I had a bunch of green, white, and red um, pom-poms from something somebody had given me. Turns out I couldn't find those. So you'll see what I end up deciding to do to fix <laughs> my mistake later. But yeah, I went through and I did, like I did before, I just took my air drying clay, I kind of kneaded it a little bit to soften it up, um, and then I rolled it out with a rolling pin. Uh, I did this on top of parchment paper because it sticks to everything. And I basically just used the same parchment paper as last time. Once I'm done with this, I just roll up all the scraps, uh, throw them in the bag with the big chunk, and then I kind of scrungle up the wax paper and throw it in too, just so that it can be reused every time I do it. There's no point in getting new paper every time. It's not like I'm baking with this. It's just, it's just putting clay on top of. <laughs> um, I also use the same technique as last time where instead of just waiting for them to air dry, I put them in the, uh, in the oven. I think it was like 200 degrees for 15, 20 minutes. I basically put them in and then I found you have to like flip them over when they come out because the back end still kind of steamed with the heat because there's a lot of moisture in there. And then I just like let them cool upside down and that tended to dry out the backside as well. So if you do try this, you can do it pretty quickly. You just got to let everything cool. But yeah, I thought these turned out really cute. I was very excited to turn these into a little garland and I thought it'd be really nice to just do some really simple white accents. So first I pulled out a Posca pen and I thought, oh yeah, I'll just draw on everything with a little white Posca pen. And it worked good for the maybe first three of these that I did. And then the pen, I think it was just the tip, was getting a little bit gunked up with any like residual powder. I also, once I took these out of the oven, the reason there's powder on them, as soon as I took them out of the oven, unlike the last ones, I sanded all the surfaces. Nothing too intense, just sort of like rub them down so they wouldn't be um, rough at all. It'd be really easy to paint on top of them. So as a result though, there was like a little bit of powder left over and I kept gunking up the Posca pan. So I went back in and I just took the same Posca pan, um, punched it down onto that, you know, plastic lid there until I had like a little pool of uh, white paint basically. And then I just used that with a paintbrush to paint it on. And it worked great. They they did great. The um, little gingerbread people, I sort of did the same two designs uh, on each one. So like the the pants ones have um, the three dots and then some pants and shirt cuffs. And then the dress ones I did either uh, with a lay down collar or with the little like squiggle lines. Something simple just to make them look a little bit different. But unlike last time having to draw something new on every single pumpkin, I decided to just do something very simple that I could repeat and make this kind of um, mindless and fun. And it worked out great. The trees were the only place where I kind of jazzed it up a little bit and it was just because I couldn't think of a good design I liked. So there's a few different designs where I kind of experimented trying to get those to look really cute. Um, but yeah, this was very fun. I definitely recommend it. If you've got some air dry clay just sitting around, make a fun little garland. Ooh, and you can see my way of figuring out how to make them lay flat. I put holes in their little hands or on the um, like just opposite sides of the tree so that when I thread it through, instead of it going through one point so that it has a place to pivot, it goes through two spaces, which allows it to lay flat. And uh, you'll see how well that works actually later on when I have it hung up on the, um, up on the mantelpiece. So yeah, this has been really fun kind of using up these old supplies. If you want to do something similar, you can do that 100%. I think it's a great way to use up 
stuff. Just stuff. <laughs> um, I kind of want to make a series of this, of just using up um, old supplies from the last 20 years. Oh my god. That uh, I've accumulated. Um, stuff that's been gifted to me, things I bought that I never ended up using, things that I found, whatever, you know, just a bunch of random junk. I'll probably make a playlist if I keep doing it. A lot of them will probably be failures, like the ukulele video, because that one ended up so mad. <laughs> but it, eh, it'll be fun still trying. Um, any case, like I said, if you wanted to try doing something like this, you go for it. It's it's a great it's a great way to use up some supplies. Um, I decided to uh, with these guys do the two holes in the hands and in the um, the tree themselves, so that things would lay flat. And I couldn't find the pom-poms I was looking for, so I used these like dollar store ornaments I had from some purpose. I don't know. They've been sitting in the like Christmas cupboard for years. I never used them for anything, so I pulled them out and I added them to the string. The only issue I had with my holes was they were a little small, so I had to use like a needle and thread to kind of loop the yarn that I used and pull that through. Um, so if I have to restring these next year, if I find more like pom-poms and stuff to fill it out better, I'll probably see if I can find a better piece of twine, something that's a little more suited to the size of everything. So this was really fun. Uh, it didn't take too long once I got it figured out. I got everybody strung up and ready to put on the mantle, and I hope you enjoy the results. Um, if you would like to support me in any way, um, there's a bunch of stuff in the description below. I have a Patreon, uh, I have a store, I also have a secret Patreon store, and you can get access to that as well as free shipping codes uh, by joining my Patreon. It's different levels. Anyways, uh, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. All right, bye.